ourselves to reach our ultimate destiny. But the truth of the matter is that if you are believing in Christ, your steps are ordered by the Lord. And God loves and cares for his own so much so that he actually takes pleasure in guiding our steps to reach the destiny he has for us. And in today's message title, The Low Road to High Places we will see how God directed David's steps from being a lowly sheep herd to becoming a highly exalted king of Israel. But before we move on to our text, please bow with me in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we come to you in the holy and in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you will speak through me as you have me to speak to your people. And Lord, at the conclusion of this message, Pray that as believers that you will bless us to be encouraged to understand and know that adversity can shape our lives to have a better ending. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The scripture for today's message is found in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 11 and 12. Word of the Lord reads on this wise. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance, and godly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Amen. The low road to high places. Our text for today is found in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 11 and 12. But let me give you a little background on what has taken place prior to our text. You see, the Lord had already given Israel what they asked for, which was a king like all the other nations. And his name was Saul. In 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 2, Saul is described as the most handsome man in Israel, head and shoulders taller than anyone else in the land. And so Israel was overjoyed about Saul being the first king. But the problem was that although Saul looked the part of a king, you know, tall, dark, and handsome, he had failed miserably as the ruler of Israel. You know, there is an old saying, and I'm sure you've heard that says, looks can be deceiving. And I'm sure we're all aware that what you see is not always what you get. And that was the case with Saul. He had all the looks of a king, but he lacked the character, discipline, fortitude, and capacity to be a good king. And everything came to a head back in 1 Samuel chapter 13 when King Saul failed to do as the Lord had told him and he foolishly offered a burnt offering that the prophet Samuel was appointed to do. So this marked the beginning of the end of Saul's reign as king of Israel. And God said that he would raise up a man after his own heart to be captain over his people. And although Saul was to continue ruling another 15 years, and at the time of Saul's rejection by the Lord, the future ruler was only a small boy whose name was David. And nevertheless, the Lord wanted the young boy knowing it as the future king so that his preparation could begin and be guided by the prophet Samuel himself. From the very day of David's anointing, the Lord began to move events to prepare the young boy for future rule. And today we will see how David took the low road to high places. 
as we take a look at three different designations associated with David and his life. And they are, first, a shepherd. Second, a warrior. And third, a king. So let's start with the first outline, a shepherd. Now our text takes us up to when the Lord told Samuel to go to Jesse the Bethlehemite because among his sons will come the new king of Israel. And Samuel was sent to anoint the new king. And Jesse had a son named David and he was who the Lord had designated to be the future king of Israel. Seven sons passed before Samuel. But each time Samuel thinks this is the one, the Lord says no. None of them are the one that the Lord has chosen. So in verse 11 of our text, Samuel asked Jesse if he has more sons. And Jesse replies that the youngest is with the sheep. And David was Jesse's youngest of eight sons and he was away tending the sheep. And so Samuel told Jesse to send for him. He said, you know, we're not going to sit down until he arrives. Then in verse 12, when David gets there, we're told that he was ruddy, meaning he had a healthy reddish complexion and was a handsome little fellow. And the Lord tells Samuel to anoint David because he is the one that will be the next king of Israel. And so Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David. And then the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. When you follow David's life, it appears that God allowed sheep herding to be part of his training ground to equip him to lead his people. Being a shepherd tending to sheep, it helped David to understand how all of their provision, protection, guidance, and security rested on the shepherd who took care of them. And when David looked at the sheep, he understood why they always needed a shepherd because their lives weren't an easy journey. They needed a shepherd, and their shepherd was David, the new anointed king, because of the lessons he learned as a shepherd. Later in life, David was able to write, the Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23, one of the most popular, frequently read and memorized verses in the Bible. And David was on the low road to high places as a shepherd. He was a man after God's own heart. And because of that, he didn't stay on the low road. And the reason we know that is because as we continue to follow David's life, we see that he eventually left his sheep herd. And this takes us to the next designation associated with David in our second outline, which is a warrior. Now, our second outline, David becomes a warrior. The introduction of David as a great warrior is recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 17. A giant named Goliath and the Philistine army had invaded Israel at Shokah. The Israelites, they were shaken and terrorized by Goliath. And here's why. Goliath stood over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet and his coat was made of scaled armor that weighed 125 pounds. His leggings were made of bronze. His weapon was a bronze spear with a tip that weighed 15 pounds. And an armor bearer carried his shield before him. Now look, this was a big man, fortified with a lot of big stuff. And for 40 long, frightening days, every morning and every evening, Goliath would come out and mock, ridicule, and taunt God's people. So the soldiers of Israel, they were overwhelmed with fear. In fact, King Saul himself, who stood head and shoulders above all the Israelites, wouldn't even dare to go out and fight Goliath. But little did they know that David, who was the next king, would soon show up on the scene as a warrior to defend God's people. Three of David's older brothers were fighting in the army against Goliath and the Philistines. And so the father, Jesse, wanted David to go to the battlefield to deliver some supplies to his brothers and to check on them. And so David got up early and left his sheep with the keeper. This is something else to show you how David was a real shepherd. 
Because a real shepherd is never going to leave his sheep. And here's what David did. David went and left his sheep with a keeper. And then he took off to the battlefield just as his father had instructed him to do. While he was there talking with his brother, he witnessed this giant Goliath making his daily terrorizing threat against the people of God. And when David heard what Goliath was saying, he got angry and he took Goliath's insults against the living God personally. So let me ask you this. Do you get angry when you hear someone insulting God? Do you get upset when you hear insults being heard, hurled against God's people? Or do you just shrug it out with a nervous laugh? Now we can all take a page out of David's book here and become angry and even stand up for the Lord and other believers when these things, you know, like this happen in our presence. And David got angry. He was willing to go out and fight Goliath. He became a warrior. He was. He wanted Israel to know that they should no longer lose heart because he would be their avenger. Saul initially objected to allowing David to fight Goliath because he saw David as a shepherd boy and not a warrior. But when he realized that David wasn't going to let anyone or anything stop him from defending God, he agreed to let David fight, gave him his blessing, his armor, and his sword. But David was uncomfortable and burdened down trying to wear Saul's military uniform, so he took it off. You see, King Saul was trusting in the armor of man for his protection. But David trusted in the armor of God. And I can just imagine David said, y'all get the stuff off of me. You know, David didn't need that stuff because his weapons were a staff, a sling, five smooth stones from a stream and a pouch to hold the stone. And then armed with his weapons of war, David began to approach Goliath. There stood Goliath, you know, with his armor bearer standing in front of him. What an amazing sight. And then he opened his mouth. You know, Goliath did open his mouth and he cursed David by the name of his God and then told him he would feed his flesh to the fowls of the earth and the beasts of the field. But with all comfort, David said, Thou coming to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield, but I come unto thee in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, this day, will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And then David reached in his pouch, and he got one smooth stone and put it in his sling, and he slung it at Goliath, hitting him in the forehead where the stone sunk. And David ran over and stood over him just like a warrior. And then he took Goliath's sword, and then he cut his head off, just like he said he would. And then David took Goliath's head back to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. And from that point on, David went on to win war after war after war. And before long, when Saul would return from killing the Philistine, the women would meet him saying that Saul killed a thousand. But David killed 10,000. And David was on the low road to high places. He started by being a shepherd. And then he went on to be a warrior. But neither of these designations was his destiny. And we'll see that as we move on to our third and final outline, which is a king. Third outline, a king. David rose as a warrior. Saul's downfall from his kingship continued to spiral down. While Saul would be allowed to serve out the rest of his life as king, he was plagued by an evil spirit that tormented him and brought about his waves of madness. During the final years of King Saul's life, he spent much of his time and energy trying to kill David. And then it's recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 31 how the Philistines gathered for a huge battle against the Israelites. And eventually the Philistines, they killed Saul's sons. 
including Jonathan, and critically wounded Saul. In his agony, Saul, he asked his armor bearer to kill him so that the Philistine would not be able to torture him. But out of fear, Saul's armor bearer refused. And so Saul fell on his own sword, followed by his armor bearer who did the same. And in 2 Samuel chapter 2, after Saul died on the battlefield, after reigning for over 42 years in Israel, David didn't know what to do. And so he prayed to God and he asked him for guidance. Here David shows us what we should do when we are faced with issues in life and we just don't know what to do. We should do like David and take our concerns and worries to the Lord. And David prayed to God and he needed the answer to two questions. First, he needed to know if he should return to Israel. And second, he needed to know if he returned to Israel, which town should he go? And you know what? The Lord, he answered the prayers of his seeking servant. And he told David to return to his homeland in Hebron. And on hearing this, David was filled within with excitement and great hope because he had been a fugitive on the low road to high places, fleeing from Saul attempts against his life for over seven years being forced to move from place to place, never being able to settle down and live in peace. But now David could finally return home safely, settle down and begin to begin the task for which he had been appointed, a king ruling over God's people. When David returned home, leaders went and crowned him king of the tribe of Judah. And then in 2 Samuel chapter 5, some seven and a half years later, David was finally able to unify the nation of Israel under his rule at long last, almost 20 years after being anointed as a child to be the future king. David was crowned to rule over all Israel. I mean, he ruled over all 12 tribes. Once crowned, once crowned king over all of Israel, David conquered Jerusalem make the city the capital of Israel, land that has played such a large part in God's plan for, the, for human history. Now in close, lesson that we can all learn from David in his life is that the road that you start out on is not necessarily the road that you will end up on. And we saw this as David traversed three different roads during his lifetime, and they were first a shepherd, and as a boy herding his father's sheep, God gave David a living illustration of the depth and breadth of his abundant term for his people. Second, a warrior. David's battle with Goliath. This showed us how victory and triumph are promised to the person who trusts God and calls upon his power for help. Third, a king. As a king. David was given the great promise of God, which was the Davidic covenant, which promised that his kingdom would last forever. And God promised to David and pointed to the coming son of David, none other than the Savior and Messiah of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And those, those who accept him as their personal Lord and Savior have the blessing and privilege of traveling on the low road to high places. Thank you, and may God bless you. Please bow with me in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this passage of Scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 16, looking at the beginning of David's call. And as children of God, I pray that we will recognize, just like you had your hand on David throughout his life as he traveled the low road to high places, we know you have your hand on us as well. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be in your family. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you have a prayer request, would like to invite the Lord into your life, or if you have any comments, please send me a Facebook message or use the Contact Us option available on our website at pmbcfellowship.org. You can also contact me with your question on today's message. To give your tithes, offerings, and donations, please visit pmbcfellowship.org. Click the give button on the top right of the page and follow the instructions from there. Remember, God loves.
Hey, cheer for giver. Thanks again for tuning in. And just know that as a believer in Christ, you are never alone on the low road to high places because God is with you. Now, I look forward to you joining us next Sunday at 11 a.m. right here at the pastor's desk or on YouTube at PMBC Fellowship or seeing you in person for Sunday morning worship on site at Providence Missionary Baptist Church in Monte Alba, Texas, being in accordance with the CDC guideline. Until then, I want you to take care and may God bless you.